Breaking news, baby. Mel Stottlemyre Jr. is going to be back with the Marlins in 2023 and beyond. Multi-year contract, now one of the highest paid coaches in the game, deservedly so. We're going to dig into that breaking news. Plus, Sean Barrett is back. I'm going to ask Schumacher all on today's Locked On Marlins. You are Locked On Marlins, your daily podcast on the Miami Marlins. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Greetings from England and welcome to Locked On Marlins. This is your daily Marlins. Marlins podcast with me, Peter Pratt of UK. The podcast. They're free and available everywhere. Still five episodes a week. Even on yes, happy Halloween, everyone. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you for watching. If you aren't watching on YouTube, yes, there's a Locked On Marlins YouTube channel. Hit subscribe there. Also, you will see Sean Barrett is back. Finally back with me. The wingman returns, Oppo with the Boppo, with a Dolphins cap. What a fit here for Sean Barrett. Sean, how you doing, brother? <laughs> I'm not sure the phrase fit and me are, uh, well, fit together. I'm doing well, Pete, well rested from a week off. Um, I'm not sure whether this is locked on Marlins, locked on Dolphins, or locked on UK politics, but we'll, we'll <laughs> work our way. Listen, mate, when, if you disappear for a week you know this show it, it quickly can can snowball and get out of control and uh you know me i love a segue and i saw an opportunity last week you know it's funny because a lot of people are you know for particularly over in the states uh you know wondering what the hell is going on with the prime minister so i thought it was useful to kind of bring everyone up to speed i'm not a political guy i've never voted i've put that out on, on public record right now i've never voted don't follow politics it's too much time following the Marlins, to be honest with you. So, anyway, Sean, uh, we've got some breaking news. Craig Mish, our man, dropping bombs. It's fair to say he's been alluding to this for some time. I did see him call out, I think, Eli directly or the Fish Stripes account to say, you're going to need to delete this tweet soon. I think he was making connections with, I can't recall who it was, but you know, someone from a pitching perspective, Maddox, I think it was, uh, from the, the Cardinals. Craig, I think, knew this was coming. But the breaking news is Mel Stoudemire is not just signing a 12-month extension. It is going to be a multi-year deal. And also, he is then going to be one of the highest paid coaches in the game. Immediate reaction to that news, Sean Barrett, that the Marlins are extending Mel Stoudemire Jr. Well, I mean, in my mind, it's the, it was the biggest um, checklist. It was on the top of my checklist as far as off-season jobs yep. is get Mel back. I mean, obviously, you could say big free agent or, you know, fixing that centre field hole. But, no, for me, it was a case of if Mel's not here, then then we I can't, as a fan, trust that this continual conveyor belt of pitching elite pitching prospects turning into elite pitching major league pitchers was going to continue. So, for me, this was job number one and the Marlins would take that off and... Multi-year to me sounds fantastic. Mm. To me, that it, to me that says this sandy window, however long you want to say it is, whether it's the full length of the contract or if it's for the next three years, Mel's here for that period of time. And not only that, he'll be here bringing up the young guys as well. You know, he's not going to see them every every single day, but I should imagine he's got his fingerprints across the whole of the organisation. Completely with you. Huge news, like you said, it was. I mean, pretty much P1. Clearly, they they had to hire a manager. Like there was that was necessary. And do you do you think there with Mel? Like it felt like probably Mel. Hence why maybe Craig was like in ahead of this one. Like Mel was wanting to stay. Like that's my read of this situation. Is Mel wanted to stay? Was happy to commit? They were maybe negotiating, and perhaps they you know Kim wanted to make sure. And do right by the new by the new manager effectively. Get him in, whoever that is. Obviously, we now know it's Skip. Skip's in, 
Skip, just wanted to check. Are you happy with Mel Stoudemire? <laughs> I mean, that probably would have been one of the questions in the interview for me is, uh, if you were hired, would you like to retain Mel Stoudemire Jr.? If anyone said no, then probably you would send them packing and just say, you don't know anything. <laughs> but I do get the sense that probably is the timeline where Mel and the Marlins were probably talking new, they wanted to commit to each other, but needed to rubber stamp it with the, the manager, right? You just you, you can't just force the staff on the guy particularly a young up-and-coming guy. So do you think that's maybe the way things played out here? Yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, at, at the end of the day, Skip Schumacher is going to be, quote-unquote, Mel's boss to mm. a certain degree. I think that's not how the that, that's not how I'd see it because I think they're two different sort of roles and you could almost have them at the head of each of their roles. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, Mel, you know, the team wanted Mel back, the players wanted Mel back, the fans wanted Mel back. So I think you're right in the sense of, they wanted to make sure that the the new guy is it's it's kind of sort of like you don't want to have that awkwardness of saying we've signed Mel and now we're bringing in the head coach because it yeah. just a bit right. So I think the timeline's not so much to make sure that they're happy with that. It's just it's optics, isn't it? It's the yeah. same way that the the Marlins let you know the, the mutual agreement of Donny Donny go in. You know they did what they had to do for the optics of we're doing it in a professional manner. And yeah. I think you're right in the sense of bringing in the manager first and then getting the, the pitching coach. Just gives, even if they didn't care what he said, they were going to do it anyway. Just doing it that way is a bit more of a professional way of doing it. Yeah, agreed. Um, when we look back on on the well, good couple of years that Mel Stoudemire has been with the Marlins, um, what's been his his biggest his biggest impact thus far is it is it on i mean it's obvious to point to sandy alcantara in many ways and you know that relationship and that development has been over a prolonged period but i must say the jesus lazardo situation for me also is right up there the fact that you get a dude that had all the talent but it just wasn't happening where he was and had lost his way effectively new organization mel stonemeyer and when I heard Jesus Lozado on on Miami mic'd up, uh, mic mic'd up with Jeremy Tache, you know, it wasn't like Mel overall was was throwing out there anything wild. It was just a kind of phrase in the back of his his ear to say, "Jesus, trust your stuff." And sometimes it's so simple yet effective. But you know, it is I, it's easy to point to Sandy, right? But I think it's obvious the impact Mel has. I think is the point I'm trying to make. And is there anyone else apart from Sandy, maybe and An Lazada, that you'd call out and say, you know, what an impact that Mel has had on on that guy? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, obviously Sandy is is number one, and you brought up Lazada, and that's right because. But for me, the what it's it's a trust, not just that you know the players have with him, but it's the trust he has. But when he can go to Lazada and go, just trust his stuff. It's mm. almost like him saying, "Look, I know you're good enough," and and just having your pitching coach trusts you to that level of saying, look, you're fine. Just trust your stuff. Just do what you need to do. And the results will come. And and obviously they have for Lozada. But for me, the biggest impact he has on the organisation is almost on the side of the fans because we spoke, as soon as Lozado came, that trade was done. The first things we were saying was, oh, give Mel an off-season with him. Give, it, yep. give Mel an off-season yep. with him and he'll be locked into the rotation. And that's what happened. And it is that case of we can now, as an as a fan, you know, trust this organisation to do the best they can with the pitching prospects that they have. You know, it is a case of he is, he's, you know, he's the best pitching coach out there in my mind. I mean, yes, I only see it now a view of, of things like that, but... The fact that the Marlins, and let's remember this is the Marlins, have made him one of the highest paid pitching coaches out there. Yeah. That shows you how much trust that they had that if they didn't do that, you know, the, the, the people knocking on Mel's door must have been numerous and the numbers must have been high. So for yeah. the Marlins to do that shows you what Mel Stottermeyer means to the whole of baseball. And the Marlins have him, so that's you know that's absolutely a massive asset for them. Yeah, no doubt. Uh, and you know, I've, I've listed off Lazardo and you know, Sandy, which is obvious. Pablo, you know, as well. It's another one like this game has, has taken to uh, you know another couple of levels as well. We can't forget even in the most recent season, like 
the Braxton Garrett emergence was truly stunning as well, like a, a real surprise. The Trevor Rogers step forward into 2021 was truly stunning as well. And that's where I, I think I've been on record saying, I think it was with the Fish Stripes guys a few months back, that it wouldn't shock me if Eddie Cabrera takes a similar step next year, like a healthy Eddie. Like I could see him really becoming something special. But for me, the acid test will be if we rock up into 2023 and Eliezer Hernandez becomes a stud arm in the rotation, that for me will seal it that Mel Stoudemire Jr., the greatest pitching coach of all time, if he can fix Eliezer. I'm not sure he's going to get the chance. Um, something we're going to dig into in the next couple of days is what the roster, um, the 40-man roster will look like because there's eight. There's currently 48 guys on a 40-man because there's eight of them on the IL. So there's some decisions to make and an optionless Eliezer Hernandez coming off a terrible major league campaign. For me, and also in arbitration, that for me is one that may be an interesting storyline. Nevertheless, speaking of interesting storylines, um, there's plenty of them. It's time to let you guys know about our good friends over at Bet Online. BetOnline.net, it's your number one source for betting, and it's got you covered with football and the start of the new basketball season. And, of course, the World Series. Not sure if they're going to get a game in tonight by the looks of it. Um, as we record this on Halloween, you can find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news podcasts, and in-depth analysis on every game. And as always, bet online. It remains your continued source for all your sports wagering information. Live betting up to the minute scores for every sport out there. It's the fastest and easiest way to check in on your favorite games and events. It includes, of course, the World Series, MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to the website today. Use your mobile device to learn more. It's bet online, and it is where the game starts. Stunning graphics. Get to me every time. Okay, Sean, I think we are, and Marlin's Twitter, collectively, of there's a sigh of relief and excitement that Mel Stoudemire will remain with the Marlins. And great news. I'm looking forward to getting in a little bit more detail on it from Craig. He's expected on the pod in the next couple of days as well. So, Craig, I'm sure we'll have the inside scoop on that. What I did want to do now, Sean, is go backwards a step or two. Um, because you know, you're away last week. We haven't spoken about it. We haven't spoken about the managerial hire. Skip Schumacher, that is the pronunciation, by the way, um, according to Marlon's Twitter as well. There's obviously, there was a few candidates brewing. There was a few second interviews going, some of the which I'm not going to try and pronounce, but nevertheless, there were a few of them. And in the end, they've landed on Skip. Um, what was your reaction to Skip Schumacher? I know you were a Joe Madden guy. Um Sounds like they obviously interviewed Joe, but no second interview. But immediate reaction on on Skip and that hiring. Um, I think you know one of the more interesting things for me, anyway, was the fact of how much they were swayed by the interview. Mm. As in, you know, the fact that he probably didn't start off as their first choice. Yeah, and he's he's put himself in that position. Um, whether or not that was a case of he was one of the people that said yes to Mal is, is interesting. But uh, it is a case of he went in and he welled them with, you know, these are long-term, Kim specifically, this is a long-term MLB person. So it's not like, yeah. you know, she's not, you know been surprised by how talented he is. Or It's a case of they probably had similar views on the future and the way they wanted to build well, this organisation, ultimately. Yeah. So that, to me, was the more interesting thing. Now, I probably wasn't that high on Skip, but that's purely because he's an ex-Cardinal and I'm not a big fan of the Cardinals. So that's going to be something that I'm going to have to try and work myself through. But I think it is a case of we don't know, do we? We don't know what he's going to be like as a manager. The yeah. only things that we can take away from are the things that we hear from the organisation and how, how enamoured they are with him, but also how well respected he was in the Cardinals organisation. The fact that he was so quickly built up to be the bench coach there. And this is a this is a 1A organisation as far as how they run that, that, that organisation. Mm -hmm. And so for them to build him up straight away into a bench coach shows you how much respect and trust they had in him. And 
kind of surprising that the Marlins were able to steal him away because mm. if he'd stayed there for what another year, another two years, we could be talking of him being the Cardinals manager himself. So I think the Marlins have done a good little bit of business in, in stealing away a top guy from a top organization. Agreed. Uh, it's still a punt, though, right? You know, in many ways, it feels like a punt. It, it's the it's the argument that Keith Law was putting forward last uh, week, the fact that the Marlins have hired this guy and the sense that they've got no managerial experience to lean on. There's no history there. They've, you know, he's been a coach for a relatively short period of time. That was Keith's point, was just the Marlins don't know how this is going to pan out. You know, they've been wowed in the interviews. They, they've just taken a punt here, right? They've, they've got a candidate they like. They've kind of gone away, done their due deal on it. Every, all the players are, are waxing lyrical, and they've thought, let's go, Skip's our guy. <laughs> well, the, the thing is, to me, you say taking a punt. I mean, this is this is a serious situation for Kim because one year left on the contract, mm. you know, it is that case of I think there will be some form of extension. I, I don't see any reason to, to move on so quickly, especially when we're talking the GM. This isn't a case of your... You know, this is such a huge part of the organization. You can't just keep chopping and changing. You need that stability in my mind to have that role. Yes. So unless you're absolutely 100% certain you've got the wrong person, you don't make that move. And I think, for me, Kim has, has shown more than enough and also has the pedigree, has that history, has that knowledge mm. that I think you do stay the course. But how many managers does a GM get, a first-time GM get? It is interesting to me. This may be her only hire at manager. So it you hope it is a little bit more than a punt because this might be her first and last. But <laughs> if she gets it right, then you know, we are looking at something that the Marlins can look for for the future. I mean he could be here for well, look how long they had Donnie for. Um but no, I think I think they'll have done a very, very, and that's why they hired. That's why they interviewed so many people. I think they've taken a lot of time to make sure that they feel they've got the best person for the job because it, it obviously it is so important, not just for the team but for her herself. Yeah, no doubt. It, it's funny, like so much goes on behind closed doors with a manager, and but when you think of you know the the issues that that the fan base has and and, and where they get into problems, for me, for Skip, all he has to do is got to be relatively good with the media. And, you know, I'm sure he will be uh, we're expecting you know, probably an introductory press conference, probably this week, I would say, back end of this week, in all likelihood. Um, so, you know, what do you like with the media? Can you convey your messaging? Could pe- are you likable to the fan base? And then beyond that, it's simply, can you just put lineups out that make sense to Marlins Twitter? And could you manage a bullpen? And that's what it comes down to. Like, as long as that's what you're doing as a manager, generally, outwardly, Marlins Twitter's going to be happy. Manage the pen, right? Put some lineups out that make sense and turn you on. And also just be pretty good with the media. Behind closed doors, clearly, it is so much more than that. But us as fans, like, they're the bits that we're exposed to. And they're the bits that, like, there was a lot of friction around Donnie at the back end where it was like these lineups were just, like, pulled out of a hat, seemingly. There was no rhyme or reason that you could kind of point to and then the bullpen management at times was spotty. And with the media, I think Donnie was fine, but it was just a bit too fine. We didn't need, you know, sometimes you want to feel the fire. And I think that was a thing that you could point to Don and go, there was a lack of fire at times. And there was probably fire behind closed doors. Like, but as fans, we want to see him blow up. Like, and as a podcast host, I want to see him blow up. Like, it's fun and it's good, you know, good content clearly for us covering the game. But I think you do need to see that too. And Donnie, I think, had just got a little bit too even keeled for me. Um, was there anyone else, Sean, before we finish up for today's episode, actually? We're on time before we finish up on this one. Was there anyone else that you would have perhaps preferred hired now that skips in? Um, were you leaning? Do you think they were going to go in a different direction? Or was there anyone else that you would have perhaps preferred to have been given this role? I mean, I, I've spoken about Madden. I, I think I've said enough about the reasons why I thought I wanted him in. And I think when ultimately when it comes to non-established managers, so we are taking, you know, sometimes you don't want to rehash the same guy over and over again. Mm-hmm. So it is a case of get get the next young, hot offensive coordinator to steal an NFL yeah. uh, of terminology 
so that's what that's what they've done. They've they've gone and they've gone to one of the the bet teams and they've taken one of their top guys and they said, look, if you tr- if the Cardinals trust you to be the bench coach, then we trust you to be the manager, because that's the evolution, I think. So I think, yeah, I mean, I could say oh, I wanted this bench coach or that bench coach, but ultimately we don't know, do we? And you know, how much do the minds know is is a, is another question that you've asked. Yeah. It is a case of we can't judge this decision until we see the, the you know the proof is in the pudding we will see very quick well, very quickly how he is with media and how he the, t- the team and the players respond to them because now we live in a you know in the social media age mm. if there's an unhappy player or there's many unhappy players you you find out pretty quickly back in the day it was a case of it was kept in the in, in the clubhouse and, mm-hmm. and fans and, and never knew anything and the media knew a little bit but they wouldn't say anything now it's all out in the open, so we'll know yep. pretty quickly what the team think about it, and and how he works with the, the team as far as on the field with, like, as you said, the lineup and the bullpen. You know that we'll have to wait until next year for that, unfortunately. But we'll know soon enough. You know whether it was a right decision or not. I'm very intrigued. Just on the lineup piece specifically, I'm very very intrigued to see if we return back to. A Donny lineup vibes of like literally it feels like a lottery, you know, from day to day, no familiarity. There's like players in different spots, and it was all all over the show. Clearly, there was something behind it, but I'm intrigued to see do they go down a different path, um, you know, and, and start to just have a more consistent feeling lineup, particularly at the top of the order where certain dudes are locked into certain spots and they get into that that pattern. So yeah, I'm I'm with you, Sean, on this one. Proof will be in the pudding, and we will need more time to reflect. We can't judge it. I understand why people are excited. There is a hot young thing kind of vibe about this, a kind of Sean McVay hire um, kind of vibe where you just go, he looks like hot stuff. Let's just get him in now because if we don't, someone else will. So I think that's probably at the heart of it. They've been wowed in the interviews. That's the reason you have interviews, and to learn something new about someone that you didn't know or to understand more about them and let them present themselves in a different way. I, I like the hire. I think I've said it last week on the episode, but we'll need time to reflect on it. We'll wait and see. That's going to wrap us up for Monday's episode. Happy Halloween, guys. Thanks for making Locked On Marlins your first listen of the day. And thank you to Sean Barrett, the UK. Go back, back as the right-hand man, of course. Uh, we're going to be back tomorrow, of course, Tuesday's episode. And we are rolling into November hot. Absolutely scorching hot because we're going to dig into an all-star for the Marlins, a current All-Star. Yes, let's not forget, Gary Cooper was a 2022 All-Star. Sean Barrett has had these notes queued up for three weeks. We've been teasing this out. It's had more marketing and advertising than I don't know what. Nevertheless, tomorrow, Locked on Marlins, Peter Pratt, Sean Barrett, Gary Cooper. Is Gary Cooper an everyday player for the Marlins in 23? See you tomorrow, guys.